Okay. I just want to read from James chapter 1 and verse 19. Okay, some practical instruction that we read here. Um, it says, um, you know, talking about temptation, talking about um, God's unfailing nature and goodness and so on. Uh, James writes and he says, So then, my beloved brethren, in verse 19, James 1, verse 19, um, let every man, yeah, sorry, James chapter 1 and verse 19. James 1 and verse 19, right? It says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Okay. So he gives a instruction, something to avoid, something to do. Okay. So first thing is he says, be swift to hear, which means you be quick to listen, quick to hear. Um, then the next two things he says, you know, be slow to speak or slow to anger or wrath. And uh, the reason is this, that if I respond in wrath, respond in anger, then it not does not produce the righteousness or the work of righteousness of God. That is not produced, right? So whatever I, I want, you know, I want to produce or I want to do what God would want me to do. And I want to represent Christ. I want to make sure that the righteousness of God is established. But if I'm not doing this, or if I'm responding in anger, uh, then it does not produce the righteousness of God, you no, know, the righteous work of God. So, so that's the instruction that uh, James gives here. So, um, you know, uh, swift to hear means that you hear, but you also, you know, make that attempt to understand. Right, understand, hear them out. Uh, slow to speak would mean not just slowly speaking, but uh, you know, you uh, do not, you know, release those words or release your opinions or release even judgment um, before hearing out completely. And the other one is, of course, slow to anger, slow to wrath. Yeah. So let's. Uh, why don't we just pray and we'll start, Father? We we just want to thank you for this instruction, for this exhort exhortation, Lord, that we just read. Lord, enable us to people be people who would hear, who would listen, who would seek to understand, Lord, the um, the other person, God, or the situation, Father God, before we actually speak, before we respond. And Lord, even as we respond, Father God, we know that, um, Lord, when there's a sense of justice, injustice, so Father God, that um, we are stirred up, provoked to anger. Lord, when things are when things hurt our pride, we are provoked to anger and respond in anger, God. But even as we see, God, then when we do that and say things and do things, and it is actually destructive. And so, God, we, we ask you, Lord, we ask you that um, our temperaments, Lord, will be led by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that our emotions will be saturated by your Holy Spirit, Father God. And Lord, we, we thank you that uh, we have the privilege of being led by you, God, uh, each and every moment, each and every day, and that that is an open invitation for each of us as believers. And so, God, may we do that, Lord. May we do that. And in doing so, Lord, establish your kingdom. In doing so, establish your reign, Lord, um, everywhere we go, God. In, and uh, even as we do that, Lord, I pray the very environment will change. The very atmosphere will change from, Lord, of that of hostility to, Lord, um, goodwill and shalom, Father God. That be a release of your kingdom of righteousness, peace and joy, even as we respond in this manner. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay, just want to share the screen. Um, Okay, so um, I think after the num, we were looking at some of these principles, okay, uh, about um, um, winning with people, right? So that's the whole section, winning with people. So we looked at relating, preparing to relate to people, and the second thing we looked at was um, how to bring the focus uh, from ourselves, which is a very natural uh, thing, to others, right? So. 
some of some of us have temperamentally we are able to do that you know our, our personality is like that but some of us maybe because of life experience etc we we need to put in effort in order to do that right so so learning this would really help us so in doing so uh, we looked at five things and the sixth one is the confrontation principle so why do we need to confront people because of conflict okay so conflict is something that is inevitable okay you have two people there will be some amount of friction some amount of conflict because not everybody sees things um the same way right so there could be some amount of conflict um or let me say conflict it could be a you know misunderstanding it could be a fight it could be whatever you know um a degree it could be so there you know we see that there is there will be some amount of conflict okay so we should not be af afraid of conflict okay so sometimes we think no no uh, uh in any relationship uh be it simple friendship or you know you take it to marriage and family or you know formal work uh we should not be afraid of conflict you know the minute a conflict comes sometimes we you know we think okay all is gone you know we were building things so well and now all is lost no it's not that's not the thing you know a conflict is simply an opportunity to uh build bridges an opportunity to seek understanding of the other person if you look at it that way then it's very constructive okay now there could be several responses to conflicts okay we are looking at the confrontation principle you know how do i confront a, a person um in order to resolve conflict right but uh, there could be several responses based on you know how we are used to handling conflict and so on so first thing could be you know i just pretend that conflict does not exist okay so i'm just pretending okay yeah you're fine i'm fine yeah everything is fine but actually there is a conflict you know it's like how they say you know there is an elephant in the room right nobody is talking about the elephant but everybody is talking about hey how are you everything is fine but there is actually there's a huge elephant right there in the center in the room nobody is talking about it so we sometimes we pretend that it doesn't exist and you know it happens in families it happens in you know, we just because we don't want to face it we don't it, it it could actually lead to some unpleasantness it could lead to you know it's like okay i speak no hear evil hear no evil you know just like those three monkeys you know we've seen that picture see he see speak hear no evil that's it and if i pretend long enough then it won't be there no right so that's a uh, thing second thing we could do is complain complain not to the person but everyone around yeah, just say okay there's a conflict there's a con you know this person is like this this person is like this and you know maybe we say okay i'm the victim of conflict you know or this there's so much of uh disturbance there's so much of uh, you know damage because of what that person says or you know that also doesn't help okay then the other thing that we could do is to uh you know make a note of it mentally okay we're like marking a score okay that's the 10th time that this person is doing that <laughs> okay it's like building pressure inside of you okay that's the 10th time this person has done that's the 11th time this person has done this you you know you're not really solved it but then you're you know, it's like you're keeping a record oh. um then also you know sometimes we give up saying i just quit you know i i don't want to handle it i don't think you know i ever want to go through that unpleasantness so i'm quitting you know i i don't want i don't want to do it but the thing is it's simmering below the surface it's simmering because we've not addressed it even though you know we we need it to right so um so we are um, just one second sorry so that's then um then it could also be you know maybe in a formal setting we could um let's say you know your position or your title you know it uh, it outranks the other person maybe you're higher up in your title you know you oversee you have a bigger responsibility bigger you know um weightage because of your title sometimes we might use our position and title to say you know it won't this is how it will be you know you're just bossing you're saying okay this is how it will be but we've not still addressed the conflict okay so we could 
do all this and that doesn't solve the conflict okay so uh, what john c maxwell shares um, is that you know we need to really care do we we need to confront okay that's the thing but in confronting how do we do it honorably how do we do it respectfully and what is your heart condition when you want to confront the person that is it full of you know i want to destroy this guy now you know <laughs> i want to make sure that make sure that they know you know i want to put them in their place right so um, confrontation is you know do we care for the people it's a very difficult thing you know maybe the person said something did something or you know is is continuing to ignore you know guidelines or whatever you know um, so do we care enough to confront in the sense what is the objective of confronting that you want to solve that you want to restore peace that you want things to be good right you want that person also we are talking about winning with people right so you want that person also to do well okay in confronting you want pers- that person to do well thrive so you know is that the mindset okay so what would help us really of course taking to taking the whole issue to, before god so that he our heart is aligned to his right okay some practical steps here okay confront only if you care about them as the first thing we saw uh, second one is to meet as soon as possible okay don't delay um, don't avoid as soon as possible because it's not going to solve um, of course we need to be mindful of the fact that okay is it a good t- you know time in the sense you know is it a good um, uh environment right is a person also in the in the mood or in the right frame of mind to receive this or to talk about this right but the third thing is very important you know first seek understanding okay understand the issue you know we might have dealt with it so many times or we might have had that same conversation but even then even if it's a multiple time it has happened multiple times and you're meeting for the nth time seek understanding you know why is it happening why is it repeating or you know why are we having this problem and why is this happening right seek understanding now we may not necessarily agree with it right that person might say you know this is why this is the problem now we may not because we might see it differently we may not necessarily agree that that is the issue but seek understanding okay i want to understand what is really happening i want to understand your perspective or your point of view just share it okay um okay few other things outline the issue in the sense rephrase it okay this seems to be the issue you know your when we when we actually uh, talk about it in that way we are um, we are actually um, you know being very objective you're not personalizing it hey, this is the problem this is the issue you know um so we can outline the issue we can also encourage a response now what do you think right encourage okay what should we do about this how can we solve it is the issue right encourage a response the person may not initially the person might just say i don't know you know you tell me or you know that is also a response but still encourage a response you know we need to solve it you know this is what is happening you tell me now how can we go about it? you tell me what i should do right encourage a response and agree on an action plan now can we do this okay you suggest okay i'm suggesting this you have anything else can we do this in order to solve this thing you no know, it's it's creating unpleasantness it's between us it's creating a problem for the entire environment right so can we can we do this like and seek you know seek an agreement saying can we agree to do this right uh, by this time or these these steps can we agree to do this so agree on an action plan okay so yeah these things right yes aware in the sense uh, like you should agree like agree should, to to these things right what what the heart we are having mm-hmm. or or what the thoughts we are having to solve the thing Let yeah so the second person also should have mm, the other person may not necessarily have the same 
understanding or same perspective but we need to but we can facilitate that right so he don't want to yeah so what if they don't want to solve the conflict yeah, they don't want to solve the conflict um they don't want to solve the problem okay so though the thing is so so in, in different scenarios it will it will work differently right see in a in a in a situation like a, like a common friendship maybe the person doesn't want to solve the conflict well the bible says that as much as possible from your side live peaceably with all people right you've done your part you said okay i you've left the open door and you said okay this is my heart this is my intention i want to solve it but if that person is unwilling then we cannot do anything about it because it involves involves the decision from their side also you know simple friendship kind of thing in a different scenario like a, maybe it's a formal work scenario then well there are other there are consequences right so if it's a so formal work scenario uh, maybe in a team kind of a setting then there are consequences consequences could be okay you you can never you can no longer be in the team you can you can no longer hold that position maybe if it's a leadership you cannot no longer function in that role right suppose you are a leader and this is the conflict and you confront there are consequences for not complying or not uh, solving it because it's a formal thing right um same also with the church or spiritual leadership kind of a situation where there are consequences so and that needs to be communicated spelled out honorably saying you know we cannot continue like this it is causing damage uh it is not helping therefore there has to be you know we have we have to communicate we have to spell out the consequences so like uh, uh it depends upon the situation also right like see if if a person is from our family uh like we can we can write off all, all these things if if i'm doing some bachelors I, if i'm having a friend so i have a conflict with them with my friend so you, if you are doing a um, i'm just doing a bachelors so bachelors degree yeah something okay so i have a friend so i have a conflict with him yeah so uh, what i think is in the if if one year overs like we i won't see him okay he won't see me okay better than uh going and speaking with resolving and all i can leave it right um yeah so the thing is uh, how far is it affecting you yeah so is it something you can pick and choose you know is it something minor that you can just you know it's like brush it off and say okay this is nothing i will forgive and keep going but if it's something that is repetitive and uh, it is a problem for you you know it's affecting you it's affecting that person also and maybe it's affecting multiple people who are connected you know with you um then we need to you know confront and say so that's the thing <laughs> so it depends on that yeah any any further questions anybody watching online any questions okay so um so all these require some skills from our part you know uh caring enough to confront well what is the skill skill of empathy skill of you know um uh, being able to not hold any bitterness or offense so it it requires that right it will requires that ability to be built in us okay um so it requires courage right because you are saying that okay um i need to i need to meet i need to go through this unpleasantness etc so it requires some amount of courage to do that it requires initiative and all that so there are some characteristics some skills um that are required here right so we're not going into that depth of that but to say okay if you feel that okay if one feels that um these are areas where i need to build i need i'm lacking then one needs to develop that okay okay um if there are no questions we'll move on to the next uh, topic which is building trust 
building mutual trust okay so when we're talking about people when we're talking about you know different relationships you know what we need is or a very important aspect of a relationship being successful okay be it friendship be it you know any relationship like even a business relationship right the there is a certain amount of trust that is involved okay so if trust is not there instead of trust what is the opposite of trust distrust or suspicion right if you are constantly guessing the other person's motive if you are constantly suspicious of the other person's whatever they say you know you're thinking okay is that correct or not you know did they say sincerely or did they mean it right if there is no trust then there is a problem okay so we need to actually work at building trust now building trust is uh, it takes time building trust between the team or between you know maybe even even with the you know the church and the pastor and you know it takes time right and it takes consistent effort right one needs to be consistent uh and it will and one needs to be transparent okay what does transparent mean being open being open nothing hidden right opaque is hidden uh transparent is nothing hidden so it takes transparency in our communication in our intentions uh it takes time in order to build trust okay so let's uh, look at some some of these principles okay first one is uh, the bedrock principle so so what we're saying is that uh, you know it's the foundation okay, uh, you know it's a foundation for any or the cornerstone for any relationship okay so we need to acknowledge and understand that okay you know um like certain certain places which are very toxic you know in the sense uh, certain work uh, environments just go with without this whole the simple thing called trust there is absolutely no trust okay and uh, you know i worked in places where it was like that it was complete backstabbing right there is no trust between the team members there is no trust between like for example i was in uh, in a sales um uh, i was in sales right my role was uh, i was as a sales person uh, as a sales executive and uh, we were selling pagers and uh, the the requests for pagers would come through uh, to another department you know customer service department uh, so they will get the Uh, request and the request would be shared to the sales people and the sales people would go and close the sale right uh, this is one 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 avenue uh, of sales coming in so we would do that but then you know there was no distrust there was so much uh, so there's no trust between the sales people right because everyone had targets and the manager would not also encourage trust right so everyone look, was looking out for their own uh everyone would you know somehow try to get more leads from the customer service folks you know saying okay because if they were supposed to give it as a roster okay suppose anand gets one lead then nina gets another then francis gets another based on the request comes in but anand would go and say you know just give me nina's thing also don't tell nina but you give me because i want i i'm desperate you know i need to finish my targets and so please give me you know so they, they there is no question of you know uh tra- you know there's no question of trusting so nina would would not trust also nina would think okay maybe this anand is getting you know all this uh thing so i i'm not going to trust him i'm going to find out you know so there is the sale between the sales people there is absolutely no trust and also they'll be very very you know protective okay people will ask okay so where are you going today which company are you going to meet uh, so they'll give something they'll say something else i'm going in this direction so so that because if i tell hey i'm going to electronic city i'm meeting this company who knows this guy might just go before me and try and meet the person and close the deal so they will not share any so no open communication no trust at all and uh, so each was each man for himself and it was a lot of uh, you know 
back uh, cutting so so it reached a place where you know the we would go to the same client and the person will say you know i'll give you 10% less same company same same sales team the other person will say you know don't give the order to him give it to me i'll give you 10% less right so it it just brought down the image of the company image of the product image of everything i didn't do actually you know it was a high pressure situation and it didn't really last people would quit they cannot handle the pressure they cannot handle the they didn't enjoy working in that environment and uh, you know so on so trust is the foundation if you want you know your team to thrive if you want you know your leadership team to really be healthy right become uh, it should be a team which has trust right it should be a foundation so the best way to do this is you become a person whom others can trust right you become a trust when you want to lead by example you become a person whom others can trust and how does one do that how can you be a trustworthy person what do you think anand if i if you were to <laughs> trust you okay so how would you behave or what kind of a person would you be if we were to trust you it depends upon the character mm. uh, there should be uh, no double face okay. like speaking something in front of us and speaking different back to us yeah and yeah character is the most important thing for me mm. to trust a person yeah. it's all about character yeah so which means you say and you mean the same thing like there's no hypocrisy it is wrong also if it's false also he should say the truth yeah in the sense yeah keep your word yeah yeah so if you say i'm going to be there and uh, you need to be there right um, but well if it's inconvenient if you if you say okay i i will do this you need to be able to do it and if you are not going to do it you know if you know very well that you're not going to be there say it when you're speaking you know uh, don't just say okay yeah bro i will be there and then inside you know you will never be there you will never going to do it and then on that day when you have to be there uh, you don't show up and then after you meet you know yeah something happened you know all, all that excuse but the thing is um, well there could be times when it's genuinely inconvenient that like something happens and you're not able to do it you're not able to be there uh, which means that you communicate it you know you communicate it in advance you know if it's a if it's a genuine thing right something unavoidable so so when we do that where people there is you know trust built up okay people can say okay you know this person i can i can actually is a dependable person right i can go i can this person can carry the weight share the load i can entrust certain things right so if trust is broken then it's very difficult right so um so when we when we trust someone um which means that uh, i need to see that same quality you know in my head in my in myself right? if if we want people to trust us right so we lead by example so the one one thing to remember is that trust takes time like we said trust takes time it takes you know because we are constantly interacting people get to know and then it builds trust is built over a period of time but it can be broken in an instant right that's the thing it can be broken in an instant you you know um and uh, it depends you know people can understand and say okay it was a it was a sincere mistake right or it was a intentional thing that was done to broken the trust people can you know people know because of the situation um but it takes time to rebuild trust takes time just like how it takes time to build trust to rebuild trust also it takes time okay but it's worth it you know let's say if a trust is broken it's not the end of the world right maybe it was an intentional mistake right intentionally we did the wrong doing maybe it was unintentional it is worth rebuilding broken trust okay okay then uh then the second thing 
okay when it comes to building mutual trust right second thing is um, what john c max would say is it's a, the situation principle okay in the sense um, you know just be objective in assessing the situation in the sense like okay here is something that is happening that or that has happened um be objective be objective in analyzing be objective in coming to a conclusion okay let's say a conflict happened or a mistake happened and it's affecting you know two people it's affecting the team don't be biased don't read your bias into it don't be prejudiced or oh, this person did you know the three mistakes and i'm sure that they contributed to this also you know don't be biased don't read into it um um but you know in, in other words don't jump to conclusions with bias or prejudice but um you know uh, be objective okay so it's it's kind of uh, it's difficult to be objective when our emotions are involved right you say something and then the you know your uh um, you are also involved emotionally in that in the sense you are upset you are upset right and you don't when when you are upset or angry uh it's difficult to be objective yes or no yeah you know you just you just want to share you just want to vent when you are angry you don't want to understand the other person right um let's say you are going on the road and uh, you know somebody makes a mistake and somebody is you know it's a you know you're supposed to turn there and then somebody blocks it you know how many times it has happened right you you are going and then uh, this this person is you know signal is about to turn you know it's green and it's this thing and this guy is not going you know you're just honking he's not going at all he's going so slow then then you realize oh actually there was another car you know before you know then that is why or some one old person was crossing the road and this person was you know slowing down to allow that and then you but you realize later you just go side and you're about to shout and then you say oh oh i see okay right so it's difficult to be objective when you are emotionally stirred up right um but because we are building trust or rebuilding trust you know be uh, objective about it okay um while addressing the situation think of the people who are involved and so on um in extending you know especially in, when it comes to extending grace and, and god's love okay extending grace and god's love you know everybody deserves a second chance everybody deserves grace so do that um right okay uh, i think that was kind of self explained the third one is okay it's this right um yeah the, the bob principle the bob principle is this that when bob has a problem with everybody okay then no uh, and sorry yeah bob has a problem with everyone then most likely <laughs> and bob is actually got a problem you know the bob is the problem right <laughs> right because the, you know that whole thing that the guy goes to the doctor and says doctor my whole body is paining everywhere everywhere i touch my body is paining right so the doctor says so oh, what do you mean so he says doctor my head is paining my neck is paining my ear is paining my you know my shoulders are paining my you know this thing my stomach is paining he's pointing everywhere and he's saying it's paining it's paining it's paining it's oh it's unbearable doctor doctor says okay come and then he takes a look at his finger okay because he's you know pointing here 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 and saying it's pain pain he looks at the finger and then he sees that the finger is broken okay wherever he touches it's paining it's not the problem with his shoulder or it's but it's the problem with his finger right so sometimes if uh, so that's the thing you know like if bob has a problem <laughs> what done <laughs> so if like somebody says you know, i have a problem with this person i have a problem with the person you know that thing is not fine i have a problem with the world which means that hey uh, are you the problem right are you having you know you have a problem with everyone everything um so it's highly likely that very likely that that person is the problem okay so that's um, that's the principle so 
so rather than applying it to others we apply it to ourselves <laughs> you know the, the temptation is i apply it to me you you know you are saying you know you apply it to yourself and say you know i i'm seeing this problem with everybody you know am i the problem is it the way that i'm looking at things um is it really the way i am relating to people what is the issue here you know am i the problem right um so be a problem solver you know um well problems are opportunities for us you know it depends on how we look at it like when we say difficulties when we when you see challenges um you know these are opportunities for us to really grow these are opportunities for us to um uh, especially in the workplace you know i i, I remember someone talking about it the workplace and how it's like nebuchadnezzar's court right daniel in nebuchadnezzar's court and so hostile and so many things happening but you know these problems even in such an environment are problems are opportunities for us to solve things grow things these are opportunities for us to be promoted to grow to a higher level right okay okay then um, any questions here or we can go to the next one no no these are actually yeah, so th all this has been adapted um okay anand's question is where you know uh, who wrote this and so all this has been adapted from uh, uh, a book written by jo john c maxwell so you know like at the beginning of the so this section we were talking about john c maxwell who was a um, you know was a, who was actually a pastor of a big huge church and then felt that a god called him to the marketplace to the workplace and uh, so um uh, so he continue his ministry is to bring in biblical principles to the marketplace and um so so all these are you know biblical principles but it is related to leadership it is related to you know how you, one deals with people and so he's written books like the 21 uh steps to you know 21 irrefutable laws of leadership he's written books on teamwork and this is another book Uh, where he's written on winning with people so yeah okay so he he has coined these terms you know um the bedrock principle and so on so appro approachability okay so what does approachability mean approachability means okay you know how approachable a person is or how accessible is the is another person or how approachable am i or how accessible am i right can people actually come to me and talk to me and uh, you know am i accessible right um do they find it easier to talk easier to interact or am i like a you know a stone wall you know uh, celebrity inaccessible or uh, you know uh, that, that is one part of it you know busy i put many barriers between myself uh, so it's very difficult for to get through or i'm like a stone wall you know uh so over a period of time people realize that okay i'm i better not talk you know so it's difficult right so um it means that a lot of humility is required to to make sure that one is accessible okay so uh, yes there there are see there are times when maybe you are busy and you're doing something that is very critical and you don't want to interact with people right there are some things that are time bound and you want to you need to finish it maybe things that you are studying you know you you have your priorities and you don't want to interact with people right so and that's fine so the thing is to communicate that and saying hey from this time to this time or you know or or this whole of this day um i will not respond i will not respond to emails i will not respond to you know texts i might i won't be approachable on calls whatever uh, i will not be doing that you know so to communicate that but other times you know if we are approachable then it is easy to build trust okay so there needs to be approachability right um so some practical things here you know uh, is that um, we need to exhibit personal warmth or you know when you meet with people um are you friendly you know are you or very unfriendly you know and personal warmth would be you know maybe a smile maybe the way you talk maybe the way you you know uh, relate to them 
the way you see them. Right? Sometimes we see people with very su suspiciously, right? We, we don't want to, you know, we're meeting them for the first time, you know, till you know that they don't hold a gun or they don't have any weapons. You know, I'm just saying figuratively, they don't mean to harm you, you know, till such time. You know, some people are like that, right? They take time. They take a lot of time in order to warm up, right? Some people at the first meeting itself, you know, okay, they are approachable, they are warm. Okay, so it's something that we need to build, right? Exhibit personal warmth. Um, second thing would be, you know, if uh, how how to be approachable is that you appreciate, you know, the, everybody is different. Everybody is different, you know, very different, different personality types, different likes, different dislikes. Um, they're all different, right? So. Well, we have a tendency, right? If people are way different from us, then we won't relate, right? If they dress differently, if they speak differently, if they are, you know, uh, then we find it difficult to relate to them and for them also to relate to us. You know, we kind of keep our distance, we alienate ourselves. We don't realize it, but we keep our distance, right? Oh, that person, uh, I'm not going to be. You know, but what if that person is in your team? And what if that person is in, you know, your church or, you know, are you going to distance yourself, right? Um, so appreciate that, yeah, people are different. This is how they are going to be. This is how they are. They have some, you know, appreciate that. Okay, so then that will help us to be approachable. Okay, um, maintain an even temperament. You know, this is, this is very important, okay? Um, you know, I, I know when we were in... in in school or college, uh, we had some teachers who would walk in and we know, oh, today is going to be a bad day, okay, because they walk in and they are, you know, sometimes we, we will be gossiping, you know, we'll be talking, okay, today I, th I think they fought with the, she, I think that teacher fought with the husband, I, I think, you know, something like that, we'll be talking, you know, we'll be passing comments because they are in a bad mood, okay, so one day in a good mood, one day in a bad mood. And so, if you as a leader, or if you as just a you know a person in a team, if you're going to have these mood swings, like one day top of the world, another day down in the ditch, kind of a thing, you know, if it's going to fluctuate every day, then it's dif difficult for people. Right? It's difficult for people to relate. Okay? They're going to they're going to be very cautious. Now, if the people are going to be very cautious, they're not going to build trust right uh, today how is this person i don't know right? today how is that person going to respond i don't know so i'm going to be careful right so it's sometimes it's it's sad but in some some families it's like that right people say okay i cannot talk to my father right? the way to the father is through the mother right or you know through the right channels right um so it's 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 very difficult, you know, you, having a conversation because of the person is sitting there with a the newspaper, uh, you know, not even responding, not talking, and then you have to, you know, you ask, I need to go here, you know, I need some money, or I need permission. It's through the right channels and so on. It's so it's it's very difficult to build trust in that thing. Okay, so so for us also, you know, maintain an even temperament. Okay, okay, yes, you know. We are human, and there are things that upset us. There are things that um, you know we are happy about, right? So we need to be, you know, we need to make an effort and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to leave that outside. Okay, now I'm dealing with people here, and you know, I'm going to leave that. Yes, there are challenges, but I'm not going to let that influence me in my relationship with you. Influence me, or if at all, you need to. Do it. You take a time out and say, "Okay, today, I don't think I should really have these meetings. You know, today, let me not because I'm going to influence this. I'm really down. I'm going to, you know, let that allow me to influence my conversation, influence my decision. So, let me take some time out. Let me just rest, be refreshed, and I can do that. Yeah." Is it because of uh, these leaders are not uh, ready to take uh, suggestions? 
like there are some ministers of God, like if you see in a ministry point of view, there are people who say these things like we have our biggest congregation, mm. that's why we are not accessible. Uh, if you see mm. in APC, uh, if if in the Sunday, Pastor Ashish will be there and all the pastoral team will be there. If someone want to come and talk, they can talk. Mm. But if we see in some ministries, they'll be uh, telling these as reasons like, we, because of we are having a biggest congregation, mm -hmm. that's a huge number of congregation. Mm. We are not accessible, approachable. Yeah. See, sometimes accessibility is a practical issue. Like it is, it is a practical thing. Let's say big congregations and everybody wants to, you know, meet that pastor or that person. It's practically not possible. And when you have multiple services, let's say, you know, after this, you have another service and uh, you also need to, you know, time to rest and reflect and recharge and all that. So, but the best thing would be to provide avenues. Okay. So not now, but some other time. Not this way, but this is the way to do it. You know, I, I am, you know, I'm there, but this is the way you connect. This is how you can do it. So when we when we provide avenues and options for people, and you let them know, yes, you know, this person is approachable. I want to meet, but then this is how I do it. This is the place. This these are the time options where I can do it. So then we then you're solving the problem. Uh, yes, it is. It's a it's a reality. Yeah, it is a thing. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll get back uh, next class. Thank you.